So you, when did you stop brewing out of here? You got the shit, you buy the, I say the shit, the equipment, the, yeah. uh, well, everything you need, you build the walls. I, 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 are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is Sea Certified Brewhead, and welcome to episode 142 of Beer Another Script Podcast. This afternoon, we are here in glorious Oshelaga, Maisonneuve, Montreal, at the brand new Avant Garde and Jukebox facility. We've got Renault and Sean, the brains and the looks, both of them. <laughs> guys, pleasure. Hey, nice to see you again. Nice to see you guys again. Yeah. It's been, uh, I mean, it's we've been seen nice. each other a bunch. Yeah, definitely. The first one was episode 38, we just checked. Right. So that's the uh, highest rating ever. It was the highest up viewed until, on Facebook yeah. okay. up until I believe November last year when we were just talking that Golden Lion out of yeah. uh, Sherbrooke came through. And do you know what they did? They doubled it. As well. They doubled they it. They didn't just they doubled Ouch. it. What did they do to double it? I guess being the first microbrewery in Quebec and from like 1986. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think it's we'll a little unfair. Respect. Yeah. Respect. And you know, maybe yeah. we can. We can awesome. see yeah. what this one can do, all right? Because so. I, I feel like I have faith in you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're getting new now. Yeah, yeah. Thirty <laughs> seconds yeah, in, we got yeah, nudity. Yeah. That's how we do it over here. <laughs> cut. <laughs> oh, we don't cut that. We no, keep okay, all of that. That's what they want. That's what they're here for. All right. <laughs> um, really good to see you guys. Yeah, um, all new. This is like R-rated for sure. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> Not X, R. Oh, it's yeah. different. It's okay. different. <laughs> um, guys, super proud of you, man. Like you guys, we were, when we interviewed you last time, you were contracting out of Oshlag, like, yeah. which is literally just across yeah, the building. Yeah, uh, across the building. It's a big building, yeah. so it's like it's a 10-minute walk. 10-minute walk, yeah. <laughs> it is, it's yeah. the biggest building I've ever yeah. seen. Seriously, it's out yeah. of control. So, yeah, yeah 700,000 square feet. This uh, is? Yeah, the, well, not, not, oh, the whole not a brewery, but the whole building is wow. like 730 or something. Jeez. So we have like a 16 here. And then Oshlag wow. is okay. exactly at the other end over there. Right, so it couldn't so, be further. Like. No, couldn't be further. <laughs> couldn't be further. Um, and this is a, a it was a converted uh, bingo hall. That's right. That yeah. you only got rid like a few months ago, right? Or was uh, it six months ago. Yeah, uh, we oh, almost August. a year now. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. we started renting in August. Yeah. Okay, that would make sense. It's not like this thing comes together overnight. Like this place is huge. Um, I didn't expect it to be. I guess I didn't know what to expect, but this is it's massive. The tap room is what ca the capacity was two two twenty five. Twenty five, I think. Yeah, one hundred and fifty yeah. seated. Yeah, it's exactly. Um, huge place, huge move. But um, and part of what I really want to talk about today is like you guys are the true sort of like embodiment of the whole, arguably the whole point of contract brewing and mm -hmm. what building your brand can do over a few years to lead to what is generally. The, the um the dream of having a space like this yeah. which Definitely. is super sick you guys feel good about it you excited you sure. scared yeah. absolutely yeah well yeah we're, we're pretty scared stressed out <laughs> and uh tired and i mean tired. yeah yeah <laughs> tired. tired yeah but uh mm -hmm. no if uh things are good uh and yeah we're super proud i mean uh should be yeah thanks cool. um i mean we're at the point we're almost going to open our tap room like in a couple of weeks. So, yes. so um, this will come out on the uh, 19th, I think. 19th of yeah. June and the uh, tap room is going to be open or the opening on launch party this week, coming weekend. Yeah, 20, on the 20, 22nd. 21st or 22nd? 22nd uh, yeah. should be the, uh, 22nd should the, be official, the uh, official opening. Official, official opening, yeah. yeah. Okay. Might be so. open a little sooner. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, see. we'll, we'll play it by ear, but I think that uh, the 22nd is a... A safe bet for the grand opening. That's amazing. So, yeah. That's crazy. We'll come together relative. I guess it feels quick, but maybe it hasn't been quick. Maybe for you guys, it's not quick. Uh, I mean, it, 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 times go by. Yeah, yeah right. It's by. like boom, boom. It, it was pretty quick. I mean, there was different. Um, uh, it, it, it didn't all go down at the same same time. Right. Obviously, I mean, there was a construction at first, and I mean, it was it was slow, 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 and then. Boom, it happened, you know? Mm -hmm. And then we got our equipment, and uh, it was like a, just another big rush to get things put together. Yeah. Uh, a lot of work, uh, probably took three, four weeks, more or less. And then yeah. we started brewing. And then uh, after starting, having started brewing, we started canning, and, and now we're just like working on the tap, room, the tap to, room to get everything ready. So, I mean, uh, everything went by pretty quickly, uh, considering that, uh, yeah, it was just uh, one thing after the other. Right. Yeah. The DLR right there, no worries, man. Yeah. <laughs> See? Key. So, always things happening. No, I bet it's just probably flown by. Um, maybe we'll start with a beer and then we'll, because we're like, 
maybe a lot of the listeners and viewers who might have missed your first episode because it was 104 ago, which is right. a lot. They would just like run through just a few. Um, we'll run through your like the beer stories and everything and how it came together because Ooh. I guess things have changed significantly since in the last two yeah. years. Um, yeah. Right, I, arguably. So arguably. it'd be cool to just to, to show what had happened up until that point and then in the last few years so what had changed because I think even the ownership was I think you when I only had Jukebox by yourself still you hadn't you didn't have a uh, yeah you went in on that yet at, at first uh, yeah. Renault at started Jukebox yeah like six years ago now almost, almost seven, seven actually yeah. wow. yeah, and uh, yeah we, we hadn't met at that point uh, or like we were part of the same homebrew club but uh, we didn't really know each other and then uh, we met he had uh, skills and you know business business uh, and I was a brewer, a uh, professional brewer, so uh, we just, you know, started talking and we figured, you know, we should put our, our, uh, our strengths together and uh, that's how Avant-Garde happened. He didn't want to let me in Jukebox. <laughs> wow, sure. savage. 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 Okay, this guy. I did it, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, He let him in, he let him yeah, in. Yeah, he, he let me in in the end. <laughs> But uh, yeah, nice so, enough. I yeah. kind of regret it after this, this yeah. last comment. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now and for the rest uh, of your life, right? Yeah, 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 sure. yeah. yeah. since yeah. it's more more Just airtight than a marriage, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. over. Yeah. Exactly. It's over. Um, which one do you want to start with, fellas? Um, Let's start with the Mr. Brown. I think. Yeah. yeah, I mean, brown yeah. it up. Yeah. This one is an older one, a newer one. This is uh, just uh, the first two weeks old, I guess. Three weeks old, maybe. Oh, as far as sorry, with the recipe and the, the product. Oh, the recipe. No, that, that's what we had it a while back, right? Yeah, that's right, one of our so. first beers uh, that we brewed with Avant Garde. So we 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 came out with uh, three or four beers the first summer, and this was uh, this was the guy. The first one, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, you got screwed, bro. That's yeah, cool. That's no, cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. All right. Cheers, well, cheers. Tiffany, cheers. Tiffany, you want yeah. some? Uh, oh yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Solid. What's the ABV on that one? 4.5. 4.5? Yep. Nice, crushable. I feel like brown ale's a little underrated right now. They are. All right, boys, you know the drill. Remember this yeah. nonsense? Yeah. You know the drill. Hang on, like this? Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. for I practiced uh, in the mirror. You've been like the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful on that. You, you can do your job, man. <laughs> it's already <laughs> dislocated. Yeah. 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 Oh, is it really? Yeah. You've got to be careful. I can, I can fit my fist in. Yeah. 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 It goes clock, clock, clock every time he eats really? something. Yeah. It's that, could, that could get you. Actually. <laughs> that could get, that could get the, uh, when you're ready, just bust it out. I can get the views that we need. That's it. There you you go. got to go. Okay. All right. Bye. You have to get a potty train. What would even be better is if I put my fist in there. <laughs> no, I know your hands? your hands have been I'm washing yeah. before. <laughs> oh, they, I, I think I remember <laughs> saying that. Yeah. Couldn't be cleaner. All right. Um, no, nah, solid, solid uh, brew, fellas. I love, um, I used to always think like, because it's a British style brown ale, you know, as mm-hmm. the trends went on, it's like, yeah, brown nails. But I don't know, I've had a few lately now, like, all right, I like it. It's, it's cool. solid. I'm appreciating it a bit more now. Like, yeah. Nice caramel and like, yeah. it's crushable. The nutty flavor and, um, mm. I mean, as far as non-hoppy beers go, brown ales are awesome. I mean, mm-hmm. we uh, when we started Avant Garde, that's like the the story behind this beer is that you know there weren't that many brown ales on the market. There mm-hmm. was uh, there were a few American brown ales, but like virtually yeah, yeah. no British brown ales. And like, I mean, it's a good style. It's a good beer. It's like a, it's a, a very complex beer as yeah. well. So we we figured you know. Fuck it. Let's let's make a brown. Let's ale. do it. Yeah. No, I really like it actually. Yep. Um, what's the difference between an American and a British brown ale? Uh, well, actually, the, usually the uh, American brown ale is a like little higher in alcohol and, and hops. Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I kind of figured. Usually, that's the main difference. Yeah, yeah. The American British is yeah. just like rammed with hops. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, probably a bit drier as well. Yeah, and, you know, more bitter. Right. Yeah. Like that. No rounded out and sure. very malty. You know? Yeah, malty. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. All right. So to catch people up. I know you just gave like a quick mm-hmm. synopsis, the beer history for both of you guys, and then how that led to up until the last podcast. So that was 2017. Right. Yeah. I want to run through that briefly. We don't have to go too long because I'd rather talk sort of more about this. If you mm-hmm. want to go, go listen to episode 38, get the whole story for two and a half hours of <laughs> ridiculousness. Yeah. But maybe we give them like a short version yeah, and right. we can catch people up from yeah, yeah, 2017 yeah. till now. Yeah, for sure. Actually, a short version, boy meets girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm just joking. But uh, uh, So I guess, yeah, uh, Renault started Jukebox um, almost seven years ago now. So 2012? 12, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And then 
I mean, he was brewing at Brassard de Montréal uh, then, actually. Contract and, brewing, and yeah. Contract brewing. And then we started talking and, and we actually built something, you know, we figured he was, you know, kind of plateaued at Brassard de Montréal. And, and, um, as far as like volume and... Uh, so volume, distribution talk. also. Uh, he didn't have any distribution deals, so it was about maybe 150 clients there. And... Uh, uh, had a few products, but uh, I, want, I really wanted to, to go further in, in that adventure. Right. And uh, only made American style beers, so only hoppy beers. So we had a, a American wheat beer, um, amber ale, and IPA, IPA, pale, ale. pale ale. Yeah, that's it. Mm. And um, Sean, Sean, we start something. We kind of get it, get along and uh, started talking, and it's like all these. There's all these other styles of beer. I'm not doing that we really want to do and um, the, the Belgian the, the uh, uh, German English, barrel English, barrel English, everything, English, everything yeah um, so let's let's start this together and, and see where it goes yeah yeah and I mean just to, to you know put a bit, bit of background uh, Renault has um, a background in finance and at that point I you know quit my studies to become a brewer and that's so why I was working in a brewery uh, professionally because yeah. eventually I wanted to open my own place so then like we figured you know he had some skills that I didn't have and I had a skill set that he didn't have and, yeah. and we got along together and uh, yeah so we decided to join forces and and, right. uh, and you know take it to the next step I guess so yeah. why it's an interesting thing that you guys just like you had a brand mm-hmm. that was on shelves I remember when I moved to Montreal mm-hmm. in 2012 so it probably would have been 2013 I remember getting all the whatever you had there was the pale and the IPA yeah, and yeah. was there a third one at all there's the jazz which was the jazz, amber and the melody it. which was the wheat, wheat beer okay, had uh, all of those in yeah. the bottles like little yeah. twist yeah. up bottles twist up uh, yeah. six packs uh, yeah I remember all of that so yeah. like Way that brand has been around before I didn't really know a lot about beer at the time either um, so when you guys connected and decided that you know maybe if you had a brand that was primarily American styles mm-hmm. And why the decision to just not build and expand an existing brand versus starting a new brand? We didn't mm-hmm. see that there was a fit to like an Americana jukebox type of feel that to other, point of it. other okay. styles of beer. Yeah. Uh, so that made sense. Okay. And uh, obviously we, we, we didn't know if we would get along that, that well so or not. Yeah. So um, I, I was compared made... to a, a side project, you know, some bands have, you know, Bands with other friends and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I always compare it to, to, to that, you yeah. know. Uh, That's just, a good analogy. Just, yeah, yeah, starting a side project to see, you know, where we can where we can go with this project and give it its own identity because you know, a brand is basically just that, it's yeah. an identity. And jukebox had all the American uh, Americana to it, and, and uh, so we didn't really see making you know German lagers with uh, under that brand. Hmm. So yeah, that's that's kind that's of smart. Kind of okay. Because it's a unique, very unique yeah. thing, right? Something you and at the same time, we were leaving. I was leaving Bossa de Montréal to come to Ashlag. So you had already arranged for that prior to. Well, we were talking around. about it, and then it came right along, and just... and it was just perfect because my uh, my contract was ending with Bossa de Montréal, and they actually sold to uh, to Molson. So well, you were doing contract was, out. was nice. pretty much dead yeah. for so you. Yeah, like, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Would you, that's yeah. an interesting point. You wouldn't have continued. After the I don't know if it could, they could have kept me or they just probably. Oh, I, I don't think they have, kept any contacts. I, I'm anyway. pretty sure they would have chipped chipped the money and and just end the they contract. They wouldn't have needed it anymore would, anyway, right? Been yeah. Toast, yeah. But they probably could have ex- they needed the space for their own stuff because they probably now had the distro networks yeah. to expand. Yeah, definitely they, they needed the space. So um, okay, yeah. All right, so you started at Oshlag. Uh, that's where we did that in 2017. So right. at that time. Five years for jukebox, avant garde was how old? I was uh, one year old at that that's point. What, yeah, that, yeah because the, the barrels that we drank out of were actually for a first anniversary. Yes, and that was yeah. the, if you all remember that, that was super fun. Um, <laughs> the cognac barrels, like pulling the. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it, it was still, I'm not sure it's still in our intro video because that, that was just fun as hell. Yeah, <laughs> you know, fucked up, man. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> You guys are dangerous. I came here ready yeah. today. I was you like, came, right. yeah. I was like, all right, done. Didn't drink Game yesterday. Yeah. No, I didn't drink yesterday at all. Really? Like, I, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I'm just, trying to space it out lately. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's get the beers cool. out, man. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> man. You guys there's, are nuts. There's pretty more. Pretty, plenty where that came from. Yeah. 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 So then, okay, so 2017. Uh, Avant Garde had been around there, and then at what point had you guys like talk us through from then till now? So, like, how soon after 
you well, know, we just started building the brands and, and see where the market was and, and if we could sell our beer and uh, would it would it keep up like for a year and the second year and then then we thought like maybe we could get our own place you know right. uh, we see, we went to see the the banks to, to see if it worked or not and told us yes so here we are <laughs> yeah that's pretty much yeah. it's pretty yeah. sweet definitely um, it, I guess it made sense uh, following you guys from then I mean I think I can't remember how early I knew of I guess I knew of Jukebox for a while mm -hmm. but and then after we spoke I'd been following it close and I noted you guys have done a lot of highly regarded like Belgian style like um, beers generally like Noah from mm -hmm. Beer is always reviewing the stuff with these sexy ass photos but the, um, <laughs> like the you know the Brett stuff all the funky yep. stuff you guys were going real hard with that yeah. and it seemed to me that it's very very well um received mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by the, the scene I mean that is super beer nerd stuff as opposed to yep. maybe the more crushable things which clearly you've moved into both sides yep. of it and exceptionally well like how, how was that is that at the time I don't think you had done a lot of the, we're just the, starting when, when yeah because it was pretty early on right? the, yeah. the, the barrel age stuff yeah. the barrel age stuff yeah. but just it was mostly it seemed mostly kind of like not I don't want to say crazy but like you it's know experimental I think we, that's probably mm -hmm. a better way for it we wanted to do it well, I mean, Sean, I think we, wanted we've always wanted brewery, that, yeah. uh, only barrel age. Yeah, when, when, think... when we started talking, at, at, like my, to me, like my ideal would be like just, just some funky stuff, uh, sour beers and, and barrel aged beers. That's what I wanted to do. But then we figured, you know, these beers cost a lot to make uh, because you know they take so much time. Uh, so we started out with uh, with whatever we wanted to brew, basically just right. clean beers, and and then we started filling barrels and everything, and, and we just dove into it, yep. not really knowing what we were getting into, uh, and just you know filling some barrels with beers that seemed to be a good match for the barrel, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we just uh, learned like that, and then then we uh, and we didn't know like what Ashlag would let us do or not, and, mm -hmm. and it's just like we started adding barrels, and it was like oh, they were okay. really great about it, and then yeah. we added more, and they were like okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. and then well and then where like, can we push this? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we said twice as much, and then yeah. they still said okay, and then uh, quick before everybody else yeah. does. Yeah. <laughs> take up all the space. <laughs> no, no, but but uh, yeah, we so we we really grew our, our uh, barrel program uh, right. at Ashlag. Right now we're like kind of. Um, uh, so we filled a lot of barrels pretty quickly. So we came out with a lot of beers, you know, back to back. Um, that was in 2018, I guess, like the, the, yeah, the funky that, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and now we're kind of like transitioning to, you know, emptying our barrels there, bringing them over here and refilling them. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be kind of like a, a pause, I guess, or, or in like the a program a, in the program. But then, you know, we're getting rid of the barrels that were not as good and, and that were, uh, you know, that had... Uh, Life, yeah, like, basically. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so we're gonna start um, start anew, maybe okay. with uh, a lot of uh, more variety and, and uh, yeah, yeah. Get smaller batches. Control. Yeah, sell it, sell it uh, on premises. Yeah, we, we, like we have a we're gonna have a tap room now, so we can just do you know, a lot do, of you know. sour stuff too, and mm -hmm. funky stuff in the barrels, and I uh, I, I hope we can go back to the. Uh, you know the first use barrel spirit clean stuff like right. the, yeah the big, definitely the big guns uh, well what know, we had uh, yeah. the, 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 the crazy uh, stuff yeah. the crazy stuff yeah so I guess it's like opened you guys up now for this level of freedom that you probably haven't had before that you don't have to ask permission now you no. just like and on top of that not only do you not have to ask you're like well let's do a small batch and sell them right out the front door yeah. Yeah. you could go you don't have to worry about Accounts and packaging and all that bullshit. You just chuck them mm -hmm. in the You still have to worry. Is it, I mean, you do. I'm sorry. It's a different type Everything of problem. Everything is our problem now. Yeah. That's yeah. true. I suppose someone else's problem. Yeah. I, probably, I take that back. <laughs> a different, different type yeah, yeah, yeah. of problem. So you got like some freedoms and then now some yeah. handcuffs. Yeah. So, there you go. Good. You get it both. Yeah. Um, okay, that's sick. So uh, I guess about a year and a half after, when did you start looking then? So you are you started the lease in August and we did it early 2017 so it's about a year and a half in that time mm -hmm. um, when did you start looking like did it take you a while to find maybe, it maybe I don't know before Christmas we started looking at well, what space well we, we, we signed in uh, in August um, the, the lease here and so we started looking I mean it, it's it's always a matter of you know um, 
what 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 comes to you and, and what you're willing to you know the steps you're willing to take yeah. and we knew that this space was was vacant right. um and actually at the time uh julien Niquet, who used to be in um uh, one of the heads of gutenberg um he had, he had told us you know the space is vacant i'm thinking about taking it and and you know making something of it but he had too many projects uh so he just told us you know you should guys you should, you should, you should grab so it. So they yeah. encourage you to Yeah, they encourage us yeah. and, and uh which was great That's of them. Cool. And and so uh we still distribute with them or to charge them. friends and yeah. we, we hope to see a lot of the employees uh, at our bar. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure so, they would because they don't have a bar over there. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. And what you have to you know, putting it in context, like I said before, we this building is seven hundred and thirty thousand square feet. Um, so there's there's a lot of suites here. There's a lot of stuff going down. Yeah. It's mostly like uh, there's a lot of storage. There's some industrial stuff. Uh, there's a bit of everything. There's a, a, a rock climbing gym. There's a go kart track right next door here. Right. There's a soccer, soccer. Uh, indoor soccer, and, and a whole whole bunch of things yeah. going down. And what they're looking to do is you know getting interesting businesses here. Yeah. And um, so basically having Gutenberg and Oshlag. Uh, at the other end over there, uh, the person who is not the owner but the the, uh, manager. the manager of the building, he well, he really likes having those tenants that take more space every less year. Less work for them, yeah. yeah. Less oh, work they for keep them. expanding. And they yeah, keep they're expanding. They're expanding. They keep expanding all the time. And so basically, uh, they were really enthusiastic about us taking up this space because right. now we have a tap room in front that uh, basically gives on Ashalaga. Um, and for them, it's visibility. It's a business that's, you know, taking roots here. It's not just storage. You know, storage, you know, if the, the price goes up uh, per square foot, then, they, you know, you can always move around. Move, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, we're basically stuck here. So we're, yeah. we're, 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 we're good tenants for them. So basically, yeah. what I want to say is that they, they, they did everything to encourage us. They uh, put us at the top of the list for this space. Uh, they waited for us. And so that's we were cool. there. We're like, okay, are we ready to do this? Or should we wait? Or yeah. but I mean, the opportunity we just was there waited and for us just until uh, August. Yeah, until yeah. the bank was ready to, to sign, and then everything. Which is a major issue with a lot of breweries trying to find a space yeah. in big cities. Right. Um, I mean, we have a lot of buddies uh, that have been looking for two years now, and they always, you know, it's hard to find the right space with the right zone, zoning. And, and uh, yeah. yeah, we had it. It was there. They were waiting for us. So. We, it's perfect, right? Why not? Yeah. I never thought of it. You just said mentioned all the different businesses around here. It's like the mm -hmm. perfect type of place. Go go cutting, come for a beer. Go do yeah. paintball, come for a beer. Exactly. Go we climb got, mountains, come for a beer. We got a parking lot, which yeah, most right people there. don't. Come, come and, for beer and, and go, go climbing after. after. Yeah. Well, come for and beer and, and go climbing back. after. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then come back for another beer. Yeah, yeah. that's it. No, it's Metro in five minute walk. So yeah, just up the road there. That's it. Yeah. So it's it's actually pretty like solid location as far as that's yeah. concerned, right? It's still industrial type of setting, but, yeah, yeah, I guess. And if it was really a hot point, then it would be twice as expensive. expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we hope, we hope that uh, the neighborhood is going to go... Uh, going up? Uh, going up. Yeah. And, I reckon uh, it will. Yeah. I'm, I'm not big on Australagas and I don't know a lot about it, but we were at, um, we did a podcast with Vieira Log where we had the jet set. Yeah. And I never, we went to Les Pass probably beforehand, mm -hmm. and we we'll just, well, I'd never gone any further east than I'd either come straight here mm -hmm. or I'd go into Les Pass. So there's yeah. this whole gap of Australia. Like, I don't know shit no, about it. Yeah, it's, it's dryland here. So, well, this right up here, but even just what, like looking on Ontario yeah. and how much that had changed yeah. and like how much it was like gentrifying. So there was, I, I hope that I mean in, in a good way, meaning that sort of like no, I, I cool businesses so coming yeah. in sure. and like not pushing yeah, out Les the Pass original. Yeah, has been pioneered and, and we hope. Yep. to be some kind of uh, pioneer here like with too. that breweries are destination places for the most part yep. think about it most breweries are in um, uh, industrial zones mm -hmm. where there's not a lot of walk by traffic right. but every time I've been to we've been to Gutenberg half a dozen times it's always because we're in my land so for mm -hmm. us it's a it's a mission yeah unless you Uber but like to take the train and stuff like yep. it's it's annoying but even when we're going there's always people walking up and down the street as well yep. maybe because of the metro and stuff mm -hmm. so there's definitely going to be some walk by definitely that you might capture and stuff but it's I cool so. I think it's probably a good time to just be around can you stay open late like what's you going to be I know it's sort of jumping way ahead you like, should yeah, be know. open roughly between 11 and uh, and 1 uh, and 1 oh okay so not, not the 9pm group hub hour no. like the 1 oh sick yeah. That's going to be the game. Change. I don't want to close too, uh, too, too late 
because there's one's good. We we don't want to get the weirdos. No, you no, know, no, man. Hell no. Two, two and three o'clock. I mean, yeah. no weirdo, no weirdo, <laughs> no weirdos. No, weirdos. <laughs> no, weirdos. <laughs> no but uh, yeah, we, we plan on closing at one. If you're a weirdo, no, if you're, a weirdo, if you're listening, you don't come here. Don't yeah. come. <laughs> Your presence is not welcome. If you're cool, it's fine. If you're cool, yeah. it's all right. If you're a widow, you can go to the Dep and buy the beer. And drink that at home. Yeah, by you yourself. still want your business, but yes. right. <laughs> not here. Not here. Right? <laughs> Let's just make that clear. The line in the sand. That's nearly three hours, boy. It, it is. Is it really? Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. She's trying to steal the high fives. Wow. <laughs> uh, where can everybody find your fine brewery online? Fine breweries. Uh, online, online, we have where is it? Where is it? Uh, f- Facebook, uh, Instagram, <laughs> all the <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Maybe Tiff might have to just put it up yeah. on yeah. the screen. Because yeah, there's, yeah. Like, there's yeah. a lot. And what is the address of this fucking beautiful place? Is opening on June twenty first, twenty second, twenty second, five five zero zero Oshalaga, Rue Oshalaga yeah. in Oshalaga, Corner, Mesa, Montreal. Oshalaga, L'Assomption. Yeah. L'Assomption is right next to the word. metro. You like you parking can, space? You can you can drive, Come but here. don't drive drunk. Definitely get an Uber. You can no walk from the metro. Weirdos. <laughs> no weirdos. <laughs> no weirdos. <laughs> but this episode we've got no weirdos. It's be called no weirdos. That is it. Okay, so come see these guys. If you see them, uh, hug them on sight. Yeah. Don't well, don't shake their hands. Free hugs. Free hugs. Free hugs all the time. Free is that hugs. cool. Ask for the smoked beer. It would taste like bacon. Yep. Guys, that is it. Thank you so much. Free for hugs with thumbs. Us. You guys are the fucking best. I love you guys. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the episode, mate, smash the thumbs up. Hit subscribe below. Hit the notification bell. Ding. So you know when the new episodes drop. Follow us on social media at BOS Podcast. And check out the long form audio so you can hear extraordinarily attractive gentlemen like these two motherfuckers right here talk about craft beer. That is it, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching and listening. Get it in. Yeah. Boom.